Uganda's Women National League, the FUFA Super League, confirmed 10 clubs to take part in this season's campaign. This year has significantly been a turning point in the development of women football. It all started with the Crested Cranes winning the Sekafa Women's Championship for the first time since the birth of this tournament. The triumph was followed by the rollback to the biggest women's continental showpiece, the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. Although Uganda's spree in the tournament was cut short, exiting without a single game won, many football analysts see it as a huge milestone in the development of this sport. We believe that uh, this is a start. It has been, it has taken us about 20 years to get back to this level and we hope to always work around it so that uh, our girls are able to compete at that level going forward. Uganda's women football journey to populence is stressed back in the year 1994 when the late commonly known as Mama Baker in the football fraternity approached former Uganda Cranes goalkeeper Posali to formulate women football teams to compete. At the time in informal friendly matches, then having the sport blossom to this level of success was building castles in the air. It was like a joking game when Fans were playing against fans, KCC fans here against Vida fans here against Express fans. By that time it was 94. Crafting the sport to the point of its current status did not come without its challenges. Sally explains the ups and downs. We were with the women, they, they were not conversant with the game. Parents we thought that it is not a, a, a woman's game. And even the other gentlemen, we are not allowing their women to play. In 1998, the national team, then she Cobbs, formed under the guidance of the football governing body, FUFA, built on a foundation of mostly friendly matches with Kenya under its funding. In 2000, just two years after its formulation and without competitive games, the she Cobbs qualified for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations following the withdrawal of Diara Congo from the final qualifying stage. They entered us in the Africa Cup of, of Nation Women and we played two matches. We, the first one was in Alexandria against Egypt. We drew 1-1. One, one. Then when they came here, they, they defeated us. And then the game also stopped there for some time. This glory was achieved with many challenges. Women pioneers of the games tell a story of the challenges the sport and them as individuals went through. The men that we used to meet, they say, no, you girls, why are you playing football? You are girls, you are not going to get married. They had to work, they had to go for work. Some of them had to get married. Yeah, there's a certain, my friend who got married and then the man didn't like what the, the, the girl wanted or the woman wanted because by then she, when she get married to a woman, what the woman wanted, so she decided to, to continue with marriage. Because in football there was no money. You could Players were only entitled to fringe benefits like allowances at the time. Oliver Mbikeka, who was the team captain, explains what motivated them to stay in the sport. In fact... If you look among the players, I, I was the, maybe the second as poorest girl. But, <laughs> but okay. But what what we 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 liked football. It was a passion. It said uh, it was a a talent. You know, when you have something, a talent is something that is born in the blood. So you can't just quit it. It. When the team came back from Afcon, FUFA had completely neglected women's football which made some players shift their career paths to Congo, where they even played the World Cup. Oliver Mbekeka and the, the mother of Nasuna qualified for, for first places in the national team, and they played two World Cups, one in Chile, another one was in the USSR, and they did very well. And then I had a, a dream going to the World, playing to the World Cup. It was my dream, as I have told you. So I had to join. It wasn't money, it wasn't about money, but it's my goal. I had to chase my goal. Sally, with the help of a few people, then decided to institute women football in schools with the aim of aiding girls in education. He says that establishing football in schools started its success spiral. We thought that less consolidation of schools 
where girls are caribbean taught you find most of the clubs belong to institutions universities secondary schools there are very few now clubs belonging to individuals like this she cooperated. The sport has undergone remarkable transitions from induction to debt. Institutions have picked interest and even parents have started picking interest because in the past they were saying ah it, the, the game will disfigure our, our, our children, they will not get married, what, 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 but now they have changed the, their attitude. Fufa says that they are currently working on a number of aspects to ensure that women football soars to greater heights. We are trying so hard to improve, you know, to improve our competitions, the women football competitions. And uh, like I said, we have a number of them. We have uh, the league, we have uh, the Fufa Women's Spa League, we have the Fufa Women Elite League, and of course the regional league. Here we are trying to introduce the capacity building, the capacity building program for the for the human resources that are involved. Speaking to NTV, some of the current players highlighted on some of the benefits they acquired as a result of playing football. I've acquired education in it when my parents has not paid any school fees because she she stopped paying for me in primary. But when I started in secondary, I was studying on my, on my talent. Currently, more than 20 girls play professional football in different countries. There is still hope that if the sport continues to develop, more girls will rip a bunch from their talent.